Okay, progress updates on the 69 Barracuda. As you can see, it's almost completely stripped. There's the front Jaguar suspension. There's the rear end, hood and quarter panels. Um, I cleaned up inside, still need to clean up a little bit. But uh, yeah, removed almost all the seam sealer putty to make sure there's not too many rust holes through. Removed all the insulation underneath the dash and firewall. I left in the asbestos or whatever that is for now. But uh, speaking of rust, as you can see, we do have a little bit of rust. Um, I also stripped the doors very inside. I'll show you in a bit. The bottom is rotten through and fiberglass repaired. Now, if your doors are rotten through, chances are there's rot some other places as well and i have found some i'm not sure if you can see this on camera but here is a seam running a line all the way through there which tells me they welded in new sheet metal in that part uh, you can see it's a hole there there's a little one there um and on the other side can't see any patches in here but there's a hole as well and as you can expect uh, they patched it down here because these parts usually rot out really quickly but uh, it's nothing too serious um, the thing is I'm not gonna continue cleaning up this body uh, I got a how can I say it? a lead on the other Barracuda the purple one it's like the only other one in Namibia and um, I'm gonna try to get that one for a decent price it only stood in Vintux, so it doesn't have as much rust. Like, not that this one has a lot of rust, but that one has even less rust, um, especially in the quarters here at the back. So, we'll see. Once I get that one, um, I'll let you guys know. Let you guys know how much I paid for all of this in the end. And uh, then we can decide which body to use. The thing is, this is a 69. The other one is a 68. Now, most of it is the same the only thing that's different on the 69 is it has square reflectors here where on the 68 it's like a little round indicator thing same with the front quarter panels uh the tail lights are different on the 68 versus the 69 but they fit the same hole they just have different lenses uh what else the hood is different and then the front grill is different but i'm sure you can replace or switch out the trim well not the trim but the actual front grill piece and then just put the 69's grill into the 68's body like yeah it's going to be a bit of a hybrid but um, given the situation we have there's no saving these cars as is so you might as well use two to like save one and call it a let's say 68 and a half but uh, yeah I'll quickly show you the doors how I stripped them and uh, then you can see the bench saw is there. Wait, let me quickly show you. Okay, speaking of a bench saw, uh, I bought some 3.2 millimeter thick hardboard and uh, I'm gonna be cutting new door cards, just for wood. The cards themselves are actually in a really, really good condition, surprisingly. So um, I'm just gonna remove these staples and the material from it, trace this, cut new hardwood or whatever you want to call it and uh, redo them so that should be easy it would probably be like an afternoon's work um, so yeah now we can get on to the doors okay sorry for that dirty hand but uh, here is the doors stripped um, I'll show you guys how I did it somewhat uh, my advice to you is don't do this unless you really have to it takes about three and a half hours per door and it's very exhausting and frustrating but uh, yeah they're stripped they're looking pretty good um, just a little bit of rust let me show you in here you can see there's some fiberglass repair and all that um, it's not that bad it's about the entire length of a door but it's not down here on the lip which is good now the reason that is because obviously back then they didn't spray the insides of a door or galvanize it or have proper seals so water and stuff that got in rotted out but the thing is here you can see it's rotten out a bit higher up usually they'll rot down in the lip and that is because here in southern africa 
Back when these cars were made, there was barely any tarmac around. These cars were driven on gravel roads and what would happen is a lot of dust and sand will make its way inside here and no joke, about five centimeters worth will accumulate uh, because the dust generally clogs up these drain holes that's underneath the doors and um, whenever your car does get into the rain, that dust and sand buildup will act as a sponge. So any water that gets in will get absorbed by all that dust and sand and keep moisture up against the metal for long periods of time and that's why uh, they rot out. But overall, um, the doors isn't in that bad of a condition. Here is the parts that are removed. My advice to anyone um, wanting to do a project car, doesn't matter what car it is, but uh, keep the stuff separate and organized. Don't strip a left and a right and just chuck it all in one box. Uh, it's gonna be a major headache figuring out what goes where once you start putting it back together. And uh, that goes for small things as well. Get yourself a lot of Ziploc bags. You'll need about a hundred if you wanna be really organized. Um, these ones are nice because you can write on it. So anything you take off, put it into one Ziploc bag, write on the bag what it is. So this would be, for example, this is driver side. So this will be driver side door mechanisms and whatever. This will be passenger side door mechanisms. So that way, once you start putting it back together, you can just go like, oh, here is passenger side. And there you go. So that really helps out. It saves a lot of time when you start putting stuff together, uh, especially with bolts. Don't throw all the bolts into one box because then you don't figure out what goes where. This way it's nice and organized. Anyway, uh, my advice for taking the doors apart. First, you want to start by removing everything you see here. Um, all the bolts, all the Phillips head screws. Uh, this one is a bit tricky for the latch. Just remove them and let the latch dangle a little bit. Then you want to continue over to the side. Remove this grommet. I think there's another one, yeah. Remove this grommet. And also remove this grommet. Then you can remove the little screws here for the latch. Uh, obviously remove these little rubbers that are here. Once everything is loose and removed inside, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna push out the window a little bit. Well, in this case, it was this way. So you wanna get the window out a little bit so that you can slide, where is it? The winder off of the window rail, which is in this bag. So once you slid it off the rail, you can take out that whole slider. Then you can have some more space to work. So for the door latch, there's a little plastic clip that holds that rod in place. Unlatch it. In here, there's more clips that holds all the rods in place. Unlatch them as well. Then what you want to do is you want to move the whole window out so that you have enough space and wait it's this side sorry and you want to remove the door handles and the lock so there's just two little nuts you remove there also um, unhook the lever there once you remove a door handle and then you want to remove the little slot so it has like this retaining fork plate that goes in just pull it out um, so once you have that out you can remove most of the rods and you can like tilt out the door latch um, if you did that push the window back in so that it doesn't damage then you can start on this bit for the little triangle window um, you want to remove this bolt here to loosen it up and then in this hole where you just took the grommet out there's a little nut here that you want to loosen up and there's a screw point which you can work, loosen up that completely, try to get it out. It's a bit of a hassle because there's a lot of tension on this rail to get the position right. Um, once you remove those, here comes the most difficult part on these doors. Um, you need to get one of those little ratchets and a bit, a Phillips head bit. I think it's a Phillips size 2 bit. You have to get your arm in here because the bracket in there has a little Phillips screw that holds the upright rail 
and uh, you need to undo that one it's a bit of a pain you can't see and if you have really long arms it's hard to get it in there but uh once you have that one out there's an even more difficult one um there's a little grommet over this hole now inside this hole you need to stick in an allen key um i can't remember the size of it but anyways there's a little allen key screw that's right through there so you have to stick in the key get it and unscrew it and then catch the stuff underneath to get it out once you have that out everything is loose basically on the inside what you want to do then is let me show you here on the window um then you want to take a drill bit and drill out this grommet well it's not a grommet it's like a plastic rivet that pushes through that holds the window to the rail mechanism so you want to drill that plastic rivet out and then also there's a little plastic standoff that acts as a bump stop or something uh, you want to remove that one as well once you have removed that as you can see there's a little rail here now that rail rides in that chrome bit of a triangle window so uh, Whoops. Um, so once you drilled out the plastic rivets and stuff, you can just take the whole window and slide it out. Um, wait, sorry. Before you do that, there's a little screw in here that holds these two pieces together. You want to remove it so that you can separate these two pieces. Otherwise, this will act as a bump stop. But once you remove that, the window can just slide past and out you go. Um, once the window is out, you can take out that metal piece for the little window and just like pull that out slowly. Uh, and that's about it. Again, um, I do not recommend doing this. It's very time consuming. I had to do it because my windows are a bit scratched up. I want to take them for polishing. Also I need to remove some window tint and since they need to replace some sheet metal down there, uh, I want to remove it so that they don't damage anything on the inside. I'm no professional, uh, there's very likely an easier way to do this, but uh, the way I did it seemed to work out the second time better. The first time was a big ass pain, but the second time went much smoother. So uh, that's about it. So the next update video will probably be if I get the 68 Barracuda and uh, I'll see you guys then. Cheers.